Oh man, I'm so excited right now. I don't know what I'm thinking about. All I know is I'm headed to the airport to pick up our first order of saltwater fish and inverts and all that good stuff. I am so excited. I'm like a schoolgirl going to her prom. Something like that. Oh, I got a text. Did you hear that? So stay tuned. We're going to do an unboxing of our first saltwater fish. Where are you? There I am. Right there. Stay tuned. See that? It's like a delay. It's like my finger's slower on camera. Hmm. Oh, sorry. Um, hey, I made it back from the airport. I'm here with Matt. Hey, everybody. He is my marine guy here at BFR, and we're going to go through these boxes right there. Look at them all. Oh, I had them sitting on my lap on the way here. I had so many, it didn't fit all in my truck. I had to put them in the cab, on the in the console, on the passenger seat, on my lap. They were everywhere. But anyway, let's see what we got here. Oop, wait. Oop, no, I took pictures. That ain't working. All right, here's our first box of Marine we're unboxing. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, we got three heat packs, still nice and warm. All right, Matt. You have the honors pulling out. All right. What do we got? Purple fire. Purple fire. Oh, that man. little dart fish live in the sand. Super peaceful. Good beginner fish. Uh, but jumpers. So jumpers. Be careful. Really? Jumpers? Yeah, big time jumpers. Hmm. Ooh, it's that one. Ooh, copper band butterfly. Uh, one of the only reef safe butterflies. They're awesome for aptasia control. That's what most people use them for. Oh yeah, look at this little snout. What's the snout for? Peaceful, that's for eating worms or worm eaters as well as aptasia eaters. Really? That's for getting in little cracks and crevices and oh, picking out worms. And... That's freaking cool. All right. There you go. What's that? Oh, you tell me. Oh, diamond goby. Oh yeah. So. Nice little goby. They're used as sand sifters, dig little burrows, but they sift the surface of the sand and keep it perfectly clean. Peaceful, uh, hardy, but jumpers again. Jumpers? Most gobies, yep. They live on the bottom, on the sand, but yet they're jumpers? They just, when they freak out, their response is to go flying towards the surface. Yeah. Ooh, a star. I know what that one is. So, what is it? A starfish? Uh, chocolate chip star. Oh, a chocolate so chip these star. These are not reef safe. Those are my favorite and they're really good with milk. <laughs> uh, they're not reef safe, but they're used as food for a harlequin shrimp. So harlequin shrimp are a, a beautiful little shrimp, reef safe shrimp, and they're used to control a pest starfish in reef aquariums called Asterina stars, which can chew on corals. And wow. once the harlequin's done eating Asterinas, they need some food and people feed them these chocolate chip shrimp. Or, uh, does, it, does the shrimp kill them right away, or it just no? It paralyzes them and uh, feeds on them uh, yeah, over the course of like two weeks. Really? Yep. Wow. It's it's a little quick. morbid. Yeah. <laughs> kind of cool. Oh, I know what he is. Yeah, a beauty. flame angel. Uh, coral beauty. Coral beauty. But a type of, of a type of pygmy angel or dwarf yeah. angel fish. They're semi-reef safe. Sometimes they nip, sometimes they don't. So nip it's kinda, on the corals? Yeah, sometimes it's with caution. Yeah. And that would be mainly stonies. If you're doing softies, for the most part, you're okay. Hmm. But beautiful, you know, they have attitude, but they're an awesome reef, uh, reef fish. I remember I went to Hawaii once, and I went snorkeling, and all you could hear were the triggers chomping on yeah, corals. On coral. That's all you heard when you were underwater. Another purple fire. They look good. Everybody looks good so far. Yeah. Oh, and there's another chocolate chip. Starting to know these guys already. Oh, let me guess. Ooh. He's a goby of some sort. Oh, he's a big one. Not a goby? Uh, blenny. Oh, he's a So blenny. he's a lawnmower blenny. So they're awesome little reef fish. Mainly herbivores used for algae control and anywhere from small to large reefs. Huh. Pretty peaceful. Hop around. Don't really have swim bladders, so they... 
just hop around and perch on the floor. Oh, there's another little either Blenny or Gobi or something. He is another diamond. Yeah. This guy looks like he's stressing a little bit. Maybe not. It was just the way he was oh, sitting. Oh yeah, the fox face change colors when they're stressed. They'll put on that funky camo color uh, to kind of you know camouflage themselves. Obviously. Don't hurt me. Oh, uh, venomous. Oh. This is one that we have in our display. They have venomous spines. They're peaceful, but they get kind of freaked out when you're in the tank. So just got to be mindful of where they're at. Yeah. Another diamond. Another diamond. A diamond in the rough. Ooh. Melanaris. So Melanaris wrasse, this is a medium sized reef safe wrasse. They're used to control flatworms mainly in reef aquariums, which is another pest that people deal with. Huh. Uh, bury themselves in the sand too, so it's important to have some sand. Another butterfly. Yep, another copper band. They look good so far. All right, what do we got here? Uh, emerald crabs. So they're typically part of people's cleanup crews in the tank. They're larger turf algaes, uh, bubble algaes, macros, hares, really good cleaners. So if you uh, took one of these guys home, you can tell everybody you got crabs? Yeah. Cool. All <laughs> right, crab. Oh, those are more crabs. Yeah, green crabs. Those, those what were those last ones? Emeralds. These are emeralds also. Isn't emerald the color of green? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I got it. What else we got? More emeralds. Turquoise? Turquoise crabs? No. Sometimes they are red emeralds. Though. Oh. I'm just joking. Turquoise is like another version of green. Kind of. This one is, oh, a shrimper. Oh. Let's see. Can I get it to focus? What is he? Oh, pistol. Nice. So he is a candy pistol shrimp, or sometimes yashahashi pistols. But these uh, live symbiotically with shrimp gobies in a little burrow. This dude keeps it all clean, and the shrimp goby stands guard outside the burrow. Hmm. Yeah, I see some clowns in here. Looks like just some normal colors variation there. Yeah. Oh, no, he's different. Oh, no, yeah. Cool. He's got, he's got a cool little patch on him. Yeah, these were just miscellaneous tank-raised ocellaris, but yeah, he's got a funky pattern. That's kind of hmm. cool. Let's see, there's a couple more. Oh, another neat pattern on that one. I'm guessing this box is all us there. In crabs. In crabs. Yep, more crabs. And ocellaris. And more ocellaris. Cool. Oh no, we got a different one. We got one ocellaris and oh, uh, flame fin uh, tang, flame fin bristle tooth or tomini tang, and they're an awesome little herbivore, probably one of the best. Uh, they're they're surgeon fish related to you know yellows and all those guys, but they're bristle tooth, so they scrape finer algaes like cyanos, diatoms, stuff like that. Awesome, awesome cleaners. There's some more clowns. Yep. You have a pet peeve of uh, people coming in here and asking for uh, a Nemo? Yep, I knew you were going to ask that. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm used to it. So. <laughs> you have any Nemos nice. or Dories? So he's a nice size uh, candy pistol. He's a nice looking one. Yep. They're no longer clowns, though. Oh, here's another kind of star. I don't know what he is, but. Oh, sand sifting. A sand sifting. What does he do? Sift sand? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, am, I am learning my salt water. Uh, cool. So, yeah, sand, just like the name implies. Yep. Sifts through the sand. Cool. All right. Rock and roll. Big bag here. Ooh, exciting. Snails. Snails. <laughs> uh, margaritas. Black margaritas. Oh, there's a, another star. There. Another chocolate chip. Yep. Food for... Food. Sorry, guys. <laughs> K-1. 
Can you have more than one star in a tank? Yes. Yeah. But these guys you you want to be careful of because they will eat corals, they will eat snails. So this is just something strictly for harlequins or a invert in fish tank. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yellow? The iconic, yep. And you can see how he's stressed or he has the sleeping colors on with a big white line. And, yeah. And he has no, uh, sometimes people see that and they freak out. They think they're sick or something. Isn't there a disease, sleeping. like a white line disease that they get or something like that? I heard. No, there's white spot. White spot. Yeah. What do I know? <laughs> I'm an aquascaper. Another, Another lawnmower slash algae. Or a chocolate chip. Oh. Uh, Azor damsel. So a lot of uh, people start with damsels. That was like the old school way of doing it. Typically, we don't do that, or I haven't done it for years. You start with live rock, live sand. You know, maybe you do a fishless cycle, and then add the guys you actually want to have in the community. This is a nice, peaceful damsel. You can keep one or a pair. That's cool. I'm glad you mentioned the fishless cycle because as a store. We decided that we were going to highly promote in fresh and in salt fishless cycling. So we yep. can save the fishies. Exactly. There's no need anymore to cycle a tank with live animals. There's so much good bacteria out there and other products that you can do it completely. Fresh water, you can do it with soil. You can get the right soils. Yeah, salt, live rock, live sand. And yep. Oh, that's a cool guy. So he looks like a tablecloth, don't you think? Yeah. Uh, he's a long-nosed hawkfish. He's, you know, maybe semi-aggressive towards inverts, uh, mainly sh um, hermit crabs, small shrimp. So you want to be careful there, but excellent worm eaters and just a cool fish. There you go, another surgeon fish uh, slash tang. So he's a sailfin tang. Hmm. Nice herbivore, big, you know, larger fish. He'd be one of your bigger, kind of, he'll run the tank more than likely. Be the boss tank, boss fish? Yep. Another Melanaris. These guys look good. So we got, we got these fish. We didn't actually get them through a saltwater distributor, right? We got them through a jobber. You know, so jobber slash cherry picker, and it was really common back in the day, you know, maybe 20, 30 years ago. Now there's fewer and far between with all the online ordering and stuff like that, that that happens now. But he's still one of the few that is still, you know, a jobber. So what he does is he goes around in L.A., that, that one stretch near the airport where all the different yep. distributors yeah, are. Whatever they call it, yeah. And goes from shop to shop, or not shop, but distributor to distributor and saying, wow. Yeah, That's a pretty cool job. Them. But he can. The cool thing is, you're not you're not just uh, getting whatever they go out and grab real quickly. He is picking you the nicest, the most colorful, the biggest for that size category. And if you see something that doesn't look good, he'll steer clear. If you see something really cool, he'll call you and say, "Hey, you gotta grab these." And it's that's oh, huh. a great way to do it. It's awesome. Did he make a phone call to you while he was picking? Yeah, two did phone he? calls. Yep. Did he really? Yeah, as he's walking through, getting our order. He'll say, "Yeah, you gotta get some of these." When did you get that call? Uh, yesterday, maybe 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock. Okay. Right so these guys were what, packed up by him or packed up by the distributors? Packed up by the wholesaler. The wholesaler. The and then he'll take them to the airport and he puts them all together in his order. Oh, okay. That's how he fills his customers' orders every week. Huh, interesting. What we got there? Uh, Six-line wrasse, so really cool smaller. This would be like a almost a nano reef fish uh, up to larger reefs. Okay. Now, you know I'm kind of a, I'm a dink. And I want you to count these lines for us. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't believe he's a... I think we got ripped off. I think he's a five three, line. Three, four, five. Yeah, if you got the line on the top, that's uh -huh. definitely six. All right, so we got our money's worth? Yeah. All right. Oh, he jumped right. He j he's a jumper. Another six line? Yeah, he just hit my hand. But he'll get the biggest... This is Glenn from Drexler's Marine, Glenn Drexler. He'll get the biggest, nicest guys, which is which is wonderful. Sometimes you won't get quality. How long animals. have you been working with him? Uh, At your other job? Thousand. Oh, really? That long? Yeah. Wow. Too long. Why? This guy is a little guy in a really big bag of water. All right. So pintail wrasse. 
So this is Where one is of the fancier fairy wrasses. Oh, there he is. Yeah. He's a really pretty one. You can get under shot. Oh, there These he is. These are kind of like show fish. They don't really serve a, a uh, you know, pest control purpose or algae control. Huh. They're just really pretty open water fish. Cleaners. Gotta have your cleaner shrimp in there. Eat parasites off of fish and clean up stuff. Yup. Oh, oh must be think, uh, must be a bunch of them. Yeah, I think I got a dozen. Let's see, what is this guy? Oh, sexy shrimp. Oh, they're so sexy. Sexy dancer shrimp. They named them after me. So they're cute little dudes, and they wag their butts, kind of you know, in like a rhythmic motion. Huh. Kind of sexy. Like those pole dancers do? I wouldn't know anything about that. Oh. <laughs> More of them? Yep. Sexy the cleaner. Alright. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, he's a, this is a big one. Oh, wow. wow he is right. Yeah, again, the advantage to, to doing uh, Glenn. He's a big guy. Uh, Midas Blenny. So he's not an algae eating Blenny. He's an open swimmer on the reef Blenny. Hmm. Um, yeah, that's about it. Pretty neat though. Very kind of an iconic Blenny, the, the gold Midas. Gold Midas. Let's see, we got another, another star of some kind. Same one we already saw once. Oh yeah, sand sifted. Let's see. All right, we don't need to see all these different shrimps. We'll open up another box. Uh, that one's taped. Yeah. Taped the other way around. Oh. Uh, smaller wrasses. This guy is a carpenter's. Uh, no, actually, that's a rosy scale. I think. Yeah, that's a fairy. That's a rosy scale. Another uh, small rosy scale, but pretty. Hmm. Another medium sized fairy wrasse. Uh, beautiful color. Like with salt water, they stress and they fade out. These guys do the same thing, salt water? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And once, yeah, once they're under nice lighting, like this yellow backed fairy wrasse, the colors are just insane. Like every color of the rainbow. Oh. Really, really pretty fish. That's awesome. Uh, holy jeez. Feather nesters? <laughs> yeah. Big cocoa worms, so they're a, a, a calcareous tube worm. Uh, huh. Some people have them growing on their rocks, but these are a, a big species. Really pretty uh, feather duster. Now where in the tank would they go? Uh, usually out of the bright light, although it's not, you know, uh, it's not 100% necessary, but in halfway decent flow. And they're filter feeders, so it's important that you add some sort of plankton, marine snow, to the water. Yeah. Phyto, yep, yep. Reef roids. I have Reef roids. No oh, little, little clown. Oh, they did put some cool ones in there. Blended. Uh, okay, here's the carpenters. This is a smaller flasher, not a fairy. The fairies are a little bigger, might get up to six inches. These guys stay maybe two, two to three, two and a half. Hmm. Uh, peaceful little, and they flash their fins uh, when they're excited or displaying. You know, they'll huh. flash different colors. Very cool. Uh, jawfish? Um, yeah. Tiger, tiger jaw. It's been a while. It's been five months. <laughs> five months. Five months and nothing but fresh water for a marine guy. Yeah. You gotta be going nuts. A, lot. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Another nice six line. These are big guys. Usually you'd see them half the I'm going down to Orlando in a couple weeks, a few weeks, to go to the Global Show. And I am definitely going to take a trip to uh, Worldwide Corals. Check out their stuff. You jealous? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe next year you can go. That would be awesome. All right. Little pygmy angel called a flame back. These guys are a smaller pygmy angel. Um, a little bit more on the reef safe side than something like a 
flame or lemon peel or coral beauty. They're less likely to nip, and they're all good herbivores too. Hmm. Uh, all the pigments. you can't tell through the bag, but that dark color is really a pretty purplish. And there's like some electric blue too. Yeah. When, when they, once they get, once it gets the non-stressed. Some kind of hermit crabs. Yep. Uh, scarlets. Is that a tag along? Hopefully a shedding. Yeah. Uh, Watchman goby, so different in the uh, than the diamonds and the fact that they will dig a burrow and they really don't sift the surface of the sand. They kind of just p patrol the sand bed and that's kind of their area. Cool fish though. So bigger. back, so back to Drexlers. Um, so would you give him a wish list? Uh, and then he goes and looks for you, or he sends. Uh, you can do it any way you want to. You can say, "Hey, we're looking for this," or just have him call you. Uh, what he does for me is he'll he'll give me the availability list from the two companies, and at the same time we'll have a sa account set up so we can go onto their website if we want to. But he just sends that to me. I go through, make a list, uh, just take a picture of it, and send it to him. Then he goes through, picks it, and then as he's picking the order I sent him. He will then call and say, hey, this also looks cool, or you got to get a couple of these. These look awesome, and it yeah. works out really well. Hmm. That's it. That's really neat. Oh, a little guy. Is that good? Oh, little, uh, so another watchman, but a smaller species. This is a yellow. This is very popular with people to also pair up with pistols. All these watchmen pair up with pistols as well. Pretty neat. Like a one on one kind of pair up? You can do two and two, although that's more rare. You can do a pair of pistols and a pair of watchmen's. Huh. That's unusual. Uh, but pairs of watchmen's are doable. I've, I've done that in the past, but one and one's easier. Yeah. Oh, a baby. This is interesting. Oh, so this is a. Uh, they, they, this is sea dwelling slash ERI now. They combined several months ago uh, the two biggest wholesalers to make the biggest wholesaler now this is one of their fish value packs so they pack them all together hmm. kind of neat they'll do that weekly staghorn damsel oscillaris clown carpenter's wrasse and yeah those three hmm. there's another grouping too yep i got three of those there's a limit you to the number you can get so I think I got three or four of these packs, whatever the limit was. Yeah, there's another one. Yep. Huh. They all look good, though. Yeah, everybody's, everybody's moving. And I'm assuming he picked them for our packs. Uh, Scopus Tang. He definitely looks stressed. So we'll put him down. Another type of Tang. Hmm. Yeah, he doesn't look super happy. Yeah. He's upside down, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, there's another so the, he, the, one of the ones he called me about yesterday was a spotted yellow eye. So he saw something different. So there's, I want to say the yellow eye is striatus, and this guy's strigosis, which is which is their their species. So the genus is Tenochatus, That's the bristle tooth tang, and then they have species. This is a spotted yellow eye, which is a little bit harder to come by. Something kind of cool. Hmm. What? I didn't hear you. I probably won't ever watch this one. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, you will. It'll be up on that TV. Uh, Mandarin goby. So they're a type of, it's, it's not a goby, it's a dragonette, but they, yeah. there's a lot of common names out there. Little micro predator in the reef aquarium. Really neat. He's going to go on our specialty system, which I think is what I'm calling that. What, uh, the ProClear system? Yeah, just for like cool, interesting stuff. Then he can, we can target feed them the worms. I was gonna say, aren't they specialized eaters? Yeah. They need uh, live. You can you can wean them off the live and get them on frozen, but they're kind of picky. Yeah. Another um, fairy. Oh yeah. And this one looks like a male. Uh, yeah. Man, it's been too long. Solarensis, there you go. Solarensis wrasse. Another nice uh, fairy wrasse, super colorful. Wait till you see these in the tanks, they're beautiful. So what I'll do after we shoot this, we'll let, let these guys acclimate, 
and I think tomorrow morning I'll come in and go through all these guys while they're in the tanks. That way we can get a good shot of them. It's tough to see when they're double bagged like this. Coral banded shrimp, uh, good worm control, and just a really cool shrimp to have in your tank. Not super aggressive, but you got to be careful in nano tanks because they will corner and eat small fish. Oh, yeah. Another big, that blaze are big. Holy oh, jeez. As Al, uh, Al Bundy from uh, Married with Children would say, biggins. Uh, Bangai Cardinals, iconic reef aquarium fish for sure. You can keep them in singly, pairs, small groups. Small groups and singly is better because sometimes pairs don't work out. Hmm. And there's another one. Yep. Oh, fire shrimp. Fire shrimp. Fire. Another reef safe shrimp cleaners. And most of these guys are cleaners in the wild. You know, you'll see them crawling inside moray eels and groupers' mouths and all over reef fish. Really? Yep. Uh, this is another type of cleaner. So it sounds great. like most of these, everything that we've got, has a job. Uh, kind for of. The most part, yeah. And over the years, you kind of learn to refine things to what's going to be reef safe, what's going to actually function and do well in captivity and maybe serve a purpose. Another uh, male solarensis and diamond. And then of course oh, you got this stuff. Interesting, unusual. Uh, like this, like the scooter. That's a dragonette, but they call this one a blenny. Scooter so blenny. The Mandarin goby is a dragonette. So is the scooter blenny. One's called a goby. One's called a blenny. But they're both dragonettes. Weird. Another bang guy. Another. What's that other guy? Another. Uh, oh, this is a ruby red scooter. He's really pretty. He's bright red or ruby red. And then yellow uh, pelvic fins. Yep. He's pretty fish. Another ruby? Yep, another ruby. A better shot of him. Hmm. Another scooter. Another scooter. These two guys look the same. Uh, fires, two more fires. Another bang eye. Another bang eye, another fire. It's the gift that keeps on giving. So normally, these guys would are, are all gonna be going into our quarantine tanks. But the quarantine tanks aren't up yet. So we're gonna quarantine them in this system right here. There's nobody in it yet, so we're just gonna put them in here and do, let them do their thing for four or five days a week. Yeah, we'll kind of assess their health after the first couple of days and then- uh, Go from there? Firing up the UV uh, tonight and uh, the skimmer isn't even running yet. Uh, but we'll get those running today, monitor them, and if we have to preventively medicate them, we will. Uh, we are going to do a freshwater bath though. Usually we would do that after quarantine, but this time we're going to do it before just to hopefully knock off some external parasites. And... Sounds like a plan. Go for it. All right, so we got a few of the more iconic guys in this box. The Royal Grama, everybody knows them, and from Nemo, of course. Jacques. Jacques. He was scared of his own shadow, I believe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. A little cool resafe basslet. That's neat. So this guy's related to the fires, the purple fire fish, and then there's some fires in this box too. They're all dart fishes, uh, but they're really cool. These guys are more open water swimmers, and they'll hang out in groups. So if you have like a medium-sized reef, you can have like a whole group of these guys zipping around. What would you consider a medium-sized reef? Fifty-ish. Uh, Fifty-gallon-ish. Uh, firefish, so he's related to those purples you saw earlier. This is an iconic reef fish. These are great for nanos all the way up to bigger. Uh, you can keep them in pairs, even you know a, a couple sets of pairs and bigger reefs. Cool fish. 
good beginners. Too. Uh oh, this ain't a fish. Oh, I forgot I got that. So I had to get an anemone or two. So this is a nice uh, purple base, um, green bulb anemone. So he'll go in that kind of specialty system. <coughs> Excuse me. Cool. But yeah, really cool. I was gonna get some giant rose bubbles, but I. You, you, I was had more strength. Yeah, restraint and a budget. Uh, this is a smaller sailfin tank, tiny guy that people could grow up in a, you know, smaller reef, and then trade back into us or whatever they decide to do. <coughs> oh, there's a dory. Yep. And another, you know, the, these are kind of a little controversial as far as their sizing and and suitability for captivity. I don't do a lot with them, but uh, it is a very popular reef fish. And this is going to be for a larger reef aquarium, which would be maybe 100 gallons. But you could certainly grow them up in a, in a smaller medium and then, yeah. Trade them out. A lot of people upgrade. Another one. Fire. Fire. Another Scissor fork. Tail. Scissor tail. Shrimp. And cleaner. Random cleaner. More shrimp. Two random cleaners. Two more cleaners. Oh, there you go. There's that Yasha. Yashia. Yashia or Yasha Hashi. This one? Yeah, so he's a really popular shrimp guppy. Oh. And he'll live with that little Yasha Hasha Gobi or candy candy pistol like uh. or not not Gobi but, but shrimp. But he's a really pretty guy. Some striking hmm. patterns and colors. And small, they're great for a small tank. What is this one? So a couple there's a couple more iconic reef aquarium fish, flame angel, so a dwarf angel. Again, so they're uh Semi-reef safe, most of the time they are, but they're a little unpredictable, but a lot of people, it's fine. You like showing off for us. Yeah, they definitely have some attitude, for sure. Not overly aggressive, but I'll let you know what's going on. What's up? Oh, there's another one. Flame. With the red Ooh, what's this guy? That's the red striper, Ebly Eye. Ebly Eye? Yep. That's a really pretty uh, dwarf angel. Classy looking. Yep. Yeah, they're nice looking. Ooh, our first bag of fish with three of them in it. These are clown gobies. So uh, they look like albino plecos. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> they're weird. They look like, they're, have you ever seen that gumdrop goby they yeah. show online? It looks like a, yeah, it looks like a chewed up piece of gum. But they're, uh, yeah, weird little coral crouching. Uh, they just hop around, very, very small goby, but they're up in the rocks, up on the corals. Huh. Pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Another yellow clown. So. Then, cleaners. Cleaners? Eight Astria. Oh, this was a pack, cleaner pack. So you got sand tigers, tiger sand conks, and then astrias and mysterious. That was their... Are you serious? Mysterious, yeah. Serious? Serious. serious. Oh. Much more full. So as Matt wraps up this last box, it's basically a bunch of duplicate stuff that has already been out there. I am going to uh, call it quits for today. We had a Russian order and a big saltwater order. So I think what I'll do is we'll get this video out as you're going to find out because you're going to be watching it. But I think in the next couple days, I'll come back through and do uh, another video of all the fish in the tanks and what they look like non-stressed. So, hey, if you like these videos, make sure you thumbs it up. Thumbs it up. Make sure you thumbs it up. Yeah, that's weird. Um, give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you already haven't. And if you already have, thank you for subscribing. I'm real close to uh, getting monetized, so I'm excited about that. We're almost at the 4,000 hour mark. 
and we are almost there we we're about five whatever five and change on subscribers so hey remember when in doubt do a water change and stay fishy my friends peace oh peace peace out